floor. You can see our in-house audience alive, feeling ready. Cage got to do the, the crowd warm-up earlier Woo. today at Star Guardian Week. We're vaguely Star Guardian themed. Kind of. You have a necklace. I have a necklace. I have an obscene amount of glitter in my beard. Yeah, uh, I don't know. <laughs> It, does, it just looks like I ate um, yeah, glitter, cake. glitter Cheetos. <laughs> it, it, it was a good concept, not so good. Uh, I don't know if you can see it on the, oh, you can see it on the camera. It's glitter. It's glistening in your in your beard. That's so cool. And as an update, we've already talked uh, about this with the in-house audience, but due to an unavoidable travel issues impacting Astralis and positive COVID-19 cases, we will be playing our first two games remotely today. Despite that, our in-house audience remains ever amazing. Thank you guys so much for being as fantastic as you are. Obviously, we'd all love to see the players on stage today, but COVID uh, remains an ongoing issue. You and flights. Well, if you tried to take any recently, you'll yeah. You'll understand flights that these one. days, well, they're pretty rough in the yeah, summer. Yeah, I feel like a Jerry Seinfeld stand-up bit. But anyway, there is a game of League of Legends to be played. We are moments away from Champion Select, and this is going to be an interesting one because this is big for Excel as they look to close out this weekend. As their schedule is pretty easy, all things considered, when you look at strength of schedule, at the top of the standings, currently tied for first. Meanwhile, Astralis, it's interesting. They beat the teams below them. They've lost to the teams above. Let's see what they can do here. To draft we go, and there's the players on stage. Cute little teddy bears. There they are. Yeah, that's what happens. Oh wow! Look at them. Heck, look at Excel. Pure determination and focus. So so confident they didn't even plug their keyboard in. They don't even need it. Nope. It's, it's a mind Miles game. in the bag. Easy. They don't clap. even need the hands. Hell no. See what they're gonna do for bands, however. GP gonna remain uh, premier blind pick on the top side of the map, so taking that one away. Finn as well has looked pretty comfortable on the pick. And it's gonna be really interesting. You heard Vettius talk about it on the desk earlier, but we had a break week and we remained on the same patch. This means there's a ton of room for innovation in the context of the patch. Yes, the same power picks are still powerful, like they were in week three, but more room for counter picks, more room for creativity when there's this much time to practice. Yeah, and over in the LCK LPL, uh, we saw the touch on some champions that are looking strong. Seraphine already taken away. Things like Silent that's extremely strong as a mid lane pick right now in the current meta when you're having things like Corky, Lissandra, Ari, it just fits in so, so well. So Astralis gonna be looking for some target bans here. Zeri still open, so we'll see what they opt into. Bot lane is kind of like the aim of the meta, the one that takes up the most bans. Lucian, Zeri, Senna, there's the Silas ban. We'll see the Astralis first pick. They have so many options here. You have Wukong, could go for the Senna, could go for things like the Zeri. Uh, Renata first pick is very common in the LCK as well. Nar first pick, very, very common. T1 was doing that themselves, so they have a plethora of champions to choose from. Uh, Stratus really leaning towards team fights normally. Is that going to be... Is that a first pick Orn? It would be Chachi if he wasn't blind picking a random tank for the top side of the map. <laughs> it's not that random, of course, Orn premier tank option. Uh, you can't call it a safe blind pick because it loses a lot of matchups, yeah. yep. but... It always brings something in the mid to late game, and we've seen, if you've ever watched a Busy Chachi game ever in your life, this man is a master when it comes to executing team fights, finding angles, so it's a good pick for Chachi, it's a good pick for the team, because no one else has to pick first. Downside, very exploitable. Definitely is. I think XL should pick their top laner up on two or three, and then pick a jungler, something like Wukong or Trundle, they're just, just so well into the Wukong to deny the team fight that they might want to opt into, and it wouldn't be Europe if it wasn't team fights. Astralis already going for it, wouldn't be surprised to see some kind of engaged jungler, control mage, the Classic Astralis. There's a Trundle one too from Marcoon. Could flex the bot with Kalista, but this is probably going jungle. Um, and of course, we'll do well into the Orn to take away the resistances. But it does leave open things like Wukong, which I think Astralis can just opt into for an incredible team fight. Yeah. Something that has to be respected too, because remember Astralis, even if they've struggled a little bit in the early games, even though they fall down some of the lanes, the coordination around the fights has been excellent. I think due in no small part to the fact that three members of this team have spent a lot of time playing together. Bizachachi, Cersei, and Kabi, of course, have splice rosters in the past. John Kuhn and Deor working well with the team thus far, but able to just kind of show off a little a bit in some of the games they've won. Again, though, Astralis has only beat the teams below them, has yet to beat a team above them. This could really change the story of their season if they are able to find advantage here over Excel. Definitely would, and would shake up the standings a hell of a lot. It's, you know, the, the classic LEC circle of suck would continue in terms of teams beating, <laughs> beating each other. I almost made you speak drink out there for a second. I saw you taking a sip, so I had to take the chance. Yeah, I didn't. Uh, yeah, that is, it's true. Yeah. That's the circle. <laughs> I just didn't, I didn't expect it to come out this early in the day, but there it is. Well, there's an Ash, so Ash, really good engage, of course. You can look for picks um, in mid to late game. Of course, you can toss arrows from base, from bot. Ruler, big standout Ash player you know, over in the LCK and Gen.G. There's the Nar into Orn, not a huge surprise. Ash, good into Kalista in lane. 
We saw Ash support today from RNG, I believe it was Ming, um, with Kalista in the lane, and it lost. But he had some fantastic arrows across the map against yep. LNG, sniping out Doinby on some team fights. So we'll see where this goes. I'm expecting it to go AD carry, though. Yeah, Ash historically very solid counter pick into the close to the slows, really interrupting a lot of the mobility and early lane threat that she normally provides. That said, we'll see matched picks on both sides. Jungle, top lane, AD. So some room to mitigate or limit the champion pool. No surprise to Junkin's Pike banned away, obviously. Um, even though they did end up losing the game where he popped off on it, individually very mechanically good on the champion. A bit worried for XL right now. I think they have a little bit too much single target damage. They're gonna have to clean that up in the 4-5 because I feel like if you're picking Trundle into or in your matching team fights, Nar will win outside lane, but you can't stop this engage from Astralis. There is so much of it that you're inevitably gonna go into team fights. So we'll see what XL opt into with these bands coming in 4-5. And you talk about all the engages they have, and I love that they're banning away Renata on Astralis' side because they can't risk Excel taking it on four. It's such a good counter engage option. You've seen how powerful Renata is, how she seems to get more and more popular every week as teams. It's not like she's had significant changes. Teams are just getting better and better at really making her work in the context of these compositions. Swain now getting banned away as well. That Swain ban tells me Lissandra because I remember on in 2020 summer, we blind picked Lissandra and Swain wasn't meta at the time. And Nuketuck was the person to pick Swain into it. And I remember my my mid laner is saying, yeah, this matchup is just unplayable. And of course, with the Swain changes, he's even stronger now. So we'll see if Astralis pick up on that one. Uh, but I'm just kind of curious what their 4-5 is going to be. What support do you play with Ash? She needs to be safe. Ari also banned away the conventional answer into Lissandra generally in the early game. So really easy. Lissandra on four angle here. Don't know what Dayor's counter pick option would be. Obviously, he's a big Vex fan individually, but I don't love that matchup. Yeah, he's gonna have to go with something for team fight. Anything for team fight. Lissandra normally loses to control mages. I was a Lissandra player myself in season eight, and playing lanes against Cassio, Victor, Oriana were absolutely horrendous because of the amount of range that they have. So they're not so much meta right now. Some API items got buffs, and Astralis need more team fight by the looks of it. There's not many champs you can pick here to move yourself into a pick comp. You know, if they pick TF, it doesn't make any sense, right? Yeah. You've got Ash and Orn. That's just team fight. You're not really playing over sides much at all, unless you're cross map sniping them and then TF salting on them. You know, it just gets way too overcomplicated. Yeah, that makes it a lot simpler. Uh, just pick Oriana Wukong, play for Wombo combos. Uh, we'll see what they round it out with. Incredibly strong champion in the early laning phase. The fact that her passive is so immediately impactful. Sandra's so passive broken in team fights, broken oh, yeah. in ARAM. Uh, any other circumstance, completely useless. Still better than the old one, but obviously is going to struggle in the early laning phase. Final pick here, support options. Something aggressive to follow the team fight, something defensive for the team, hard to say. Yeah, they could go a bit more defensive here. I mean, if you pick Ash Rakan here, you're going to get countered in lane way too hard, and you have enough engage already. Tom Kench coming through. Uh, we'll see what XL opts into. Of course, Braum is just kind of the notorious counter. Not so much to Tom, it's good in Tom, but very good into Orn, because you can block the Call of the Forge God, so that negates a lot of engage. Let's Blitzcrank crank being hovered. Fiddle. Fiddle support with Kalista sounds pretty good. You can go in, pull him out after he's done his full combo, get a couple fizz, but you're extremely squishy against their champs. Is Mickey gonna do it? There's two, situ uh, oh, there's two situations where you believe the fiddlesticks is if you know nothing about Mickey or if you know a lot, because he's the only person crazy enough to try it, but he'll he opt is. not to. One thing I want to call, call out, praise for Astralis. You pointed out earlier in the draft, Excel lacking a lot of reliable AoE damage. Yes, they have the Dream nor Lissandra combo, but outside of circumstances where they can pull that off, it's mostly single target. Tom Kench shuts all of that down with a single one. I'm looking at Mickey's match history right now in solo queue. He's been playing fiddlestick support. He's played three or four games in a row. He lost every single one, though. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe he doesn't have the confidence to bust it out on stage. But like I said, Astralis, insane team fight, incredibly long range engage. I would be surprised if Patrick's not running cleanse. Uh, Nuke Duck maybe Spellbook as well, so he can move towards Cleanse himself as well. Finn will just go Merc Treads. They have a lot of CC, so you need to make sure you negate as much of that as possible. Exile have good tools to shut down some of the engage, right? The Call of the Forge God can be blocked. The Cleanse will help out a lot. Uh, Patrick can pull Mickey out when he does look for those engages, but it's on Astralis to find these fights, and Astralis do have the better teamfight comp. Something that we have to keep track of. The execution has been excellent in the fights, but often they've fallen too far behind in the early game to make it happen. Astralis, can they find their form here against Excel? A team currently in a three-way tie for first. A single up Set in a week that is entirely top five versus bottom five will change the standings significantly. Both these teams. For all these bears, it's crucial. Excel versus Astralis. Starting now. It's very crucial. Oh my god. <laughs>
Is that, is that you? you? Did you stop playing Valorant for a weekend to join us? <laughs> I've missed he you. He was the inventor, the creator, the beginning of that chant. The absolute meme king. Shout out to Excel fans in the audience, the Astralis fans there as well. Early game's gonna be big though. It's about weathering the storm. We know what happens late game. Astralis push their R buttons together, ideally, and most people on the enemy team will die. That yep, said, getting to hope. that stage, always a bit difficult, especially against a player like Markoon, who has been on an absolute tear in the early game recently. Huge factor for Excel's overall early game. Definitely is. Surprisingly, Patrick actually running the heal here. It doesn't take cleanse against the Ash, so that could be a bit risky the later the game goes. Might have to go for an early Quicksilver Sash. We'll keep our eye on his items. Obviously, stunts your... Um, itemization growth in a sense, right? If you're against Skarner, it's a similar sort of thing. Xerxes is gonna drop a ward, see if Markoon does any early game shenanigans. And I think, yeah, like you said, it's on Markoon here. His champ, extremely strong, wins level three against Wukong, can clear single target camps faster, you know. Um, something like a red-blue gromp into an early game can work on Trundle. Raptors, of course, sucks, but uh, has a lot of early pressure when it comes to setting up plays. Ready, a little bit of a leash going on over to Xerxes, hoping to uh, kickstart his clear. For now, just keeping our eye on the lane matchups. Warren going to lose out in the level one, and he knows it, so not afraid to take too much time away from the lane. Now, you've seen uh, it highlighted in a wonderful video by the Lolly Sports content team. Excel often like to give up a reward XP to Nuke Duck in the mid lane. It does not happen this time. He will not have the XP edge. However, he does get the push early on. Sandra, obviously, Ice Shard, very easy to hit the entire wave. A bit more difficult for Dayor to get that same setup. Even if he wins out in these extended trades with the power of the passive, as long as Nuke Duck's got the wave in his favor, things shouldn't be too bad. Yeah, smart ward there by Dayor. Gives up the push a little bit, but he's scared of Markoon doing Red Raptor's Gromp and then running into Xerxes Jungle, who wants to do a full clear. The Wukong wants to clear all his camps before fighting. Patrick and Mikey will hit level six, uh, level two here, sorry. Gonna get a bit of an aggressive trade onto Astralis. So you have mid and bot push as XL. What do you want to do with that? You want to invade his bot side. We'll see if Markoon does do that because Nuke Duck is already leaning down there. Maybe he wants to get a ward of his own to try to spot out Cirque, who skipped his Raptors to make sure he's safe. And I think he will be. Again, after the Tom Catch changes, level one, level two, Tom Catch not very menacing in those 2v2, 3v3 skirmishes. So something to keep track of. The Braum obviously pairing up with the Trundle. If they do want to invade, that jungle is going to be big. But Excel in the early game pulling ahead. Ah, uh, not. Chachi, sidestep, walking away, has to flash from the wall up. Well played by Finn to find that advantage. And again, he he went in blind. He said, I'm gonna pick Orn. Yeah. You know, whatever is gonna happen, and this is what's happening. It's the power of Nar in the early game. So oppressive, especially in the hands of Finn. And it just goes to show the value teams place on different playstyles, right? You look at T1, for example, they will first pick a Nar if it's open instantly. Why? Because one of Bonnets, Zeus's most comfortable champions, two, it gets the push and basically wins every matchup right now. You know, the old school counters to Nar are Camille, Ken, and Jace. You don't tend to see them much in the meta. Camille really needs Galio. Um, Jace got a bit hit by the durability update, and so did Kennen. So, um, of course, Jace got nerfs too. So, Nara is just flavor of the month right now. Uh, whereas Chachi wants Orin. He wants teamfight. He wants to lose lane and then try to punish the rest of your team. So, it's risk versus reward when it comes to getting these lane matchups. It, and it's on Finn to get ahead. Yeah. Bit of a trade going down here on the bottom side. Four stack concussive blows. Thick skin already there for the extra shield and Guardian gonna proc as well. So, not too bad as Kabe and Jung Hoon are gonna be able to take back push in this lane for now. Yeah. Wave bouncing into XL. Have to play a bit safe here. And it's good that we bring up rules, because when we look at Vizichachi's stats, I could show you his landing stats, but they're rough. But when you look at his team stats, kill participation, when you look at his damage share, yes, it's all very low. The kill participation, kill participation stat, though, is what I want you to look at first. Now, damage isn't that big. He plays tanks. Damage percentage, very low, naturally. But he is always there for the team. He's a big factor to make things happen. And we saw this in their games last week, where he would sacrifice waves to roam, to make plays happen. And that's something we have to keep our eye on again, as Mickey... Okay. Stepping forward, looking for the potential all in here. Patrick, isolated versus Kabe. Ignite now taking down to Jung, who just trying to take a little bit of health away. Mickey very, very low. Kabe starting to turn this one. Exhaust now going down, heal coming out. Mickey trying to body block, leaps back to the minion. Well played, just to make sure that no one else would get chipped out. But ultimately, Astralis taking control of the lane. So Patrick lost his flash as well. They just used two combat summoners on top of that. I think the flash was perhaps earlier on. They were looking for all-ins and maybe a bit of miscommunication there between the XL bot lane because Mickey looks very confident just stepping forward, drops the ignite, almost 1v2ing Astralis' bot lane and Patrick could just not keep up. So now XL needs to be bailed out here. They need their jungler to come down here to try and push Astralis' bot lane back or get them a push out so they can take a base. Difficult situation. Ash, similar to Ezra, I feel like once you get wave pressure as Ash, you're just never going to lose it. Volley's just such an unbelievably obnoxious skill, especially yep. in the early laning phase. So they're though, clearing out just a little bit of vision, trying to make sure that he can keep an eye on Nuke Duck in case that roam does come from him. Little does he know, Markoon waiting in the darkness on the bottom side of the map. Just cleared that Gromp. Can't start to move in here. They will know that he's on the bot side. 
Hold my breath for a second there as Mark Hoon was looking for Jung Hoon. And if you look at the LPL, the way the game's played over there is Talia, Silas, and Lissandra are all so high prior mids that what they do is they push in waves and then they roam to sides. We saw Shaohu do it today as well. So that's what Nuketuck wants to do. He wants to just push these waves, crash them on a tower, and run to side lanes and dive them. He was hovering top around 30 seconds ago trying to dive top. Now maybe he's going to go towards bot side, clear out some vision, make it so. Astralis are always sweating as to where Lissandra can be. And if you're in, a commun in the comms saying, Mid's missing, Lissandra could be bot side. You can never push bot, you need information until she shows, and then she shows back on the next mid wave. You have 10 seconds to breathe until she pushes it back in, and now she's missing again. So that's the constant pressure that Nuketuck wants to apply. He just needs his jungle support to be around to get some vision for him. And you saw that already, Mark Hoon clearing out multiple wards with a single use to Sweeper. Excellent value there for him. They are doing what he can to hold on to the lane overall, just laying down a bit of damage, trying to match the pressure that Nuketuck is putting out. New side really has enough damage right now to go for the all-in. But both of them just fighting for wave pressure. Because as you said, it's not really about their 1v1. It's about who can get out of the lane. And for Dayor, all he has to do is stop Nuke Duck from leaving. Definitely does. Bot lane seems to be where Cirque wants to set up a play. No pa no flash on Patrick. Ward has the clone. Can't commit. Mickey now backing away. I don't really think there's an angle here. No. Just a bit of poke. No angle at all. Markoon will get crap for that as well. So. Bit of a blunder there by Cirque, so he just gives up his positioning for no reason. Patrick looked like he stepped too far forwards, but look at the items, right? He's got Berserker Greaves, Tier 2 Boots, has so much move speed that Cirque can't even catch up to him, even with Ash auto attacks. Now, Markoon's around the bot side. I mean, they have good setup here with the Brown, but they both do have Flash. Bit tricky. Yeah, the Clan's not going to find as much value here early on, short of the concussive blows, but being able to flash over the pillar is big to stop any potential gank. Is spotted out by the ward there. Kabi now isolated instead, focusing on Jungkook, but they have no way to cancel the dive, so we'll be able to make it back to safety, and so much attention put on the bottom side from both junglers, but neither one really finding a bigger advantage. Yeah, if they needed to know how to cancel it, they should have asked me. Pull that one off there. I'm supposed to burn you. You're not supposed to burn yourself. <laughs> well, you didn't do it, so I had to do it. <laughs> if Medic was here, he'd have instantly done it. I know he's laughing backstage. Um, so Exile do crash the wave. Finn constantly has this top pressure. CS numbers will slowly start to build up. Finn's trying to get information. Question mark ping on the Xerxes there. Says he must be around there somewhere. And um, yeah, just pushing lanes right now for XL. Looks like they haven't found anything just yet, though. Back to Finn has gone for the Swifties. Really just wants to make sure he can stay in range to trade. Just outspace essentially the Orn's potential damage. <laughs> Look at this. It's working pretty good. So Here at home, Swifties versus the Orn may be the purchase. So irritating, isn't it? What can what can Chachi do? I mean, Finn can dodge the Q, and then you can't knock him up. You can't knock him up. You can't use your W, and then you're just getting out traded constantly. So. Disadvantageous matchup here. Finn probably going to push in the wave and look to base. Dior, of course, not running cleanse against Lissandra. XL, if they find an angle there. I mean, they're playing the Freljord. Stun, CC, chain. Ooh, you're getting into the lore comp. Yeah, Lissandra ult into Brown knockup, into Brown stun. I mean, there's no real way Dior could move. No boots either, so he has to be a bit afraid of contesting this mid-push because of the amount of setup that XL have. And it looks like we're going to have a neutral objective trade. I think Cirque knows Marcoon's on the top side. This isn't going to be too bad for Astralis overall. Again, the gold is within touching distance. The thing you lose with the Herald is obviously... It's always better to get the Herald in the early game, but when you're the team that eventually wants to force team fights, it doesn't hurt to be able to have that third dragon or that sole point as a way to force uh, XL to fight you in a, in a close pinch. Definitely, and you can see top lane, two plates have already fallen. Astralis going to trade that for one plate, but it looks like Patrick and Mickey can catch the way very safely here. Normally in these cross-map situations, the bot lane has to give up the wave fully because at this point in the game, you don't have TPs on your solo laners because they've already TP'd back earlier on. And your jungler's topside, so you're naturally facing a 3v2 at level 6, so you have to back away normally, but Cirque's are using his time to do Dragon there. Allows Patrick to catch the wave, and he's pretty happy with that. Markoon should repay uh, his bot lane soon with that Herald. Two plates, of course. And obviously, Excel early game has been pretty fantastic, of course, across uh, the entire season thus far. First tower percent, they are second. And when they're getting heralds like this, it's no surprise. Getting these gold leads. Uh, KD at 14, also very big. Yes, they're, getting, they're dying. They're getting a lot more kills, and they're always coming out on top. Currently tied for first. And that's something that Astralis have done an okay job of managing so far. But with the herald on the map, this is where the decisions get a little bit more high stakes. Mistakes here can cost you very dearly. And indeed, Nuketuck going to pick up that blue buff, should help him get the mid push. Looks like he's not even going to go back to mid, he's going to hover towards bot here. Good warning by Astralis, will spot them out if they walk through river, but this is exactly what Astralis want. They want the game to be very slow and wait for dragon stacking, wait for dragon fights. And they want XL to come into them. Yep. They can set up really good pincers, really good engage angles, really good AoE CC. So it's ideal for Astralis if they were to get the next Drake and then XL kind of have to fight the third and the fourth. Um, and in that game state, they want to be even, as even as possible. Right now, five, 600 gold, not the worst. And if they can keep it like that for the next 10 minutes, they'll be very happy. Well, let's take a look at how the gold is distributed. It's something that we generally keep our eyes on as the 
At this exact moment, Nuke Duck and Finn, they're topping out, but not by that much. No significant item break points quite yet in the game. Obviously, early boost two rush for Nuke Duck and Finn delays the early mythic. And you can see Astralis not in a bad position whatsoever. It really is just the XL bottom lane that is suffering a little bit there in the gold department. Again, small differences, but something we have to keep our eye on as we move later. Yeah, we still had in the sent on there. Total gold. Now XL might try to dive top here. Herald plays for Finn, actually. Ignite Forward. used by Chachi. Summoner Spellbook maybe just trying to clear the wave, just trying to stop this one, getting everyone in the area. Finn now has to walk away. Nuke Duck's still standing. The charge is going to go in, but the tower will not It's going to die. Maybe. Ooh! What's the HP of the tower? Observers, can we click on it? One HP! One HP! One HP! Oh, you love to see that it. That is brutal. Well, it looks good and it's nice, uh -huh. but it's one of those things where Finn can just walk up and hit it and it'll die. But it looks uh, really But nice. it looks really cool. <laughs> it's like the least in montages when they're going to die anyway, but it does some flashy stuff and it you know just what? make it look cool. We, we take this. Luckily, it's not going to regen. So Finn will eventually just push a wave out and take that one. Yeah. But for now, But the Strawless. number one does look cool. Look, that's a little bit less money. And if they can defend it for two and a half minutes, they'll stop them from getting that last plate of gold, Gadriel. It's you know what I want Finn to do? I want him to run into River, hop over the wall, run behind Auto Chachi, take the tower, and then kill him. That would be cool. Uh, but it looks like Chachi's going to push out that top wave and back away. Finn, is he farming Crux right now? Dang. I think he was looking for Crux. I would, if I was Markoon, I would be furious if that happened. Feels like one of those bad Instagram money mogul mindset kind of things. <laughs> Take your Crux and the wave at the same time. In 10 minutes. <laughs> How to get rich. <laughs> Finn will be bowling once he gets that top tower. I mean, they're even in CS now. It's only a 300. You can see in the middle, obviously, there are only 300 gold difference really separating them. Once the Trinity Force uh, is online, then things are going to get a lot more oppressive. But Visichachi, just run past him, get the tower. He's just, he's just, he's here playing PvE. It looks like he's fighting Finn, but he's just stopping the minions from getting to the tower. This man is, this man is more worried Chachi. about the tower than he is about his own life. Defend the one HP but tower, Chachi. Finn Otto. can just take it and no. kill him. He can't, they can't hit the tower. Finn just walked oh past him. Maybe he's scared of taking a tower shot that he thinks that maybe he'll die. If this man ever retires, secret service. I have never seen someone so willingly give their entire health bar for a one HP tower. Finn's gonna get it anyway, is he? And Finn, what? The local gold! Finn! The local gold of the tower! Is Chachi no, gonna defend gonna take, He no. should let what, it die! He's letting it die? He should let it die! Now oh. you don't get the local gold! Why, why did Finn not just take it? That's quite bizarre, to be honest. Maybe he's scared of dying, but Chachi doesn't have any mana to set up any kind of setup. Um, a bit, you can tell it's you, a slow early game because that's not me. They did that one. You can see this. Uh, Nuke Tuck and Finn, though, they're pulling ahead. They may not have gotten that local gold, which would have shot him to the top of the standings, as we now see the engage on the bottom side. Trundle, all, or not Trundle, excuse me. Tom Kenshaw used. Marcoon still chasing forward. Nuke took on the way. This is going to be bad. Kabi still has the cleanse up. Flashing out early makes sense. That is one dead catfish running. Stun gonna connect. Tower still focused on Nuketuk though. That's gonna be big. Has the opportunity to get himself out with his own ultimate. First blood dropping down for Excel. The Thrall coming out but will not connect. The rest of the team now retreats. Top tower down, two plates down on the bottom side. Just seconds before they fall away. Suddenly Excel find themselves a pretty significant gold lead. Definitely do. Pretty clean dive overall. They'll get themselves out and they don't lose too much. Looks like Finn took over mid wave and he's gonna go back top and take over top wave again. They're gonna get themselves a dragon as well, which was Astralis' prime win condition. And I mean, they're spiking so hard. Look at Nuketuk already, already got the loot. And 14 minutes in, has his mythic. I think Finn won't be too far away. From... Is he taking red buff? Finn? Is he, is he on red buff? Oh my god. If I was Markoon, I would be molding. <laughs> Takes Krux and red? Finn is a greedy, greedy top okay, lane. Man. It's also just like... I... I just feel weird about it because he didn't go for the tower local gold. It'd be yeah. one thing if he was doing everything in his power to make money, but, but it's just you know like... What the worst part was? There was plates as well, so that's 160 gold. Yeah. Then there's oh, the we tower. The then we got the, the local gold. And now we've got a very delayed Tom Kench death as uh, Jung Hoon saving Private Kabi here. And, and then first tower gold, yeah, of course. So, yeah, Markoon pops the pillar. And Nuke Duck's on the way. You can see Dior on the minimap trying to come behind his team to help them out, but he's just way too far away and, of course, doesn't have the TP because he used it mid. I think that's the reason uh, XL or Kaming. This dive gets cancelled on the W. He ends up falling, and then by the time Dior arrives, they're already out. Another fight here around the Herald. Astralis have access to all their ultimates apart from Dior's, which is coming up soon. Younghoon too. Easy, clean pickup. Credit to Astralis, not missing a beat here. Grabbing the second Herald, yes, uh, immediately less valuable, but does give them a pressure point to play around. Definitely does, and I think Exile just want to cross map here and look for bot tier one. There's no TPs on Astralis and both solo lanes showed there, so here's the cross map. Herald used top, Finn will take bot tower. Nuketuk needs to be careful here not to get caught out. He has the cleanse in case an arrow is thrown. 
So just a trade-off. We'll see who gets the mid wave in because then you can play on two lanes, which you're slightly more favored on. And XL can use their bot lane to move around the map. But the York should be able to clear this wave pretty happily and Chachi's around just in case. And Kendra, we talked about how good it was for Astral so they could go even. And now they're not they're not going even. 1.5, 1.6k behind. But this feels, like all things considered, a pretty solid early game for Astralis. They don't have all the drakes they would like. They lost a little bit more in the tower department and the gold department than they would have liked. But Chachi's pretty close to even, especially in the NAR versus a, a Orn matchup. And I think this, is, this has been solid from Astralis. Yeah, it definitely has. Roughly 1.5, 1.2, 1.3 in that area. Gold deficit is not the worst. I mean, Astralis don't have any mythics yet. Chachi just picked his up. Kobe just picked his up out of base. Dior is probably going to base pick his up. And th that's the spikes you want. You want first item mythics, maybe a second item even as well. Um, on things like the Orana, Archangels. Uh, Chachi might opt towards things like Frozen Heart, perhaps. So we'll see what itemization they go for. But the more items, the better. When you're playing a teamfight comp with losing lanes, which we saw, I mean, Dior's still down 20 CS. Chachi's catching back up a little bit. And bot lane was the only real pressure point Astralis had. In a Callista lane and everything, right? You pick Callista to win the lane. And the problem is, I know Callista is strong because every pro player tells me she's strong. But every game we watch, unless she Wampa stomps early game, this champion is super underwhelming. It is. And I mean, it's not really a tank shredder either, if you think about it, right? Unless you can up towards things like the Blade Room King. You don't really have things like the Kraken Slayer on Jinx and. Um, I mean, it does spike pretty early to mid-game, and that's the idea behind the Callista. You have bot push, you get a winning lane, you get early drakes, profit, right, into the mid-to-late game, and those drake stacking just means you can get more team fights forced, and you can force yourself with the Callista ult, but it, it's kind of one of those things that in scrims, there's more fighting. On stage, sure. there's less fighting, therefore the Callista nets you less. There are some games where it still definitely pops off, uh, just this is the one where it's been quite quiet, and of course, Ash is pretty good into Callista naturally. And yeah, well, the track the impact that it has in the team fights with the ultimate sending Mickey in. Maybe they can play a little bit more aggressively, but right now, if the game slows down, if we get to these big major objectives, it does feel like Astral is her favorite, at least in terms of the uh, you know, vanilla 5v5 on paper team fight. That is, of course, never how it happens, so execution still remains king. Yeah, execution will be very important because there's a lot of conditions that have to be met for Astralis, right? You know, if Ornold gets blocked, that's already a minus one in terms of team fight. Um, if the Ash Arrow misses or hits onto Nuketuck who has cleanse, that's not ideal. You know, if you hit Patrick and layer a CC where Cirque's can follow up, perfect. Execution comes out on top. Vice versa for XL if Chachi goes too deep on a Trundle ult, or Dior gets caught on a Lissandra ult and chains the seed, or you stack up too much, and of course you'll naturally lose the fight. The Strata is slightly more favored because they have more tools. And 50 seconds on that dragon, we will see the first fight. I expect as there's only a bot tier one for Astralis to trade for. We'll see if they get the push there. But of course, it's on the same side of the map as the Dragon, so they might be forced into a fight anyway. Tom Kench on the way out. Not looking to commit to anything. Very quiet game. Very, very quiet. Yeah. I'll be honest. Eerie silence in a lot of these moments. And a lot of trades across the map. You know, a lot of small macro plays, but only a single kill. I hope the next team fights fetch. Stop trying to make fetch a thing. It's not going to be a thing. It's going to be a thing. Oh, Cirque's eh? forward. This is it. This is contest Getting over the vision down. Here. Mickey wants to get a little bit more vision on this Drake. If we could look at XL's vision observers, they don't actually see anything on the bot side. They see nothing around the dragon. Marcoon's trying to find his way in to find these pigs to clear them out. There's the Patrick, first arrow flash misses. Out to save. He's trying to get away from the Tom Kench. Jung Hoon found him isolated. Nuketuck off to the side with Vizichachi, stopping Lissandra from doing much of anything. There's a lot of kill pressure there. Mickey on the retreat, but he's already had to burn Unbreakable. That means there's no wall to stop it. Callista ult, though, will save the day. Wow. Ooh. Oriana all going wide, definitely not what Astralis needed, but they're now bullying their way into this pit. Yeah, but they've lost a lot of ultimates. The only one they have left is the Wukong and the defensive one of Young Hoon. But look where Nuketuck is on the map. He's saying, guys, we're not fighting this. We have no vision. Marcoon tried to get it. Then Astralis pulled the trigger mid. Good reaction by uh, Patrick to flash the arrow and then pulls Mickey to safety. But Mickey being low HP means they can't force their way in. Nuketuck says, guys, I'll push out top. Maybe get a, a blue buff as a consolation prize. Two dragons for Astralis. Ten minutes away from a possible soul. On the recall, sticking around there on the bottom side of the map, Snooktuck takes away the enemy blue again. The decisions Excel are making are oh, keeping big. them ahead in gold, about 2,000 in their favor. They know he's here somewhere. They're spam pinging. Oh, the blue orb! Losing out on this. They have to be careful. He's going to try to Goomba bounce over, but he misses! He tried to jump on Vizichachi's big head, whiffed, and had to flash out to safety. And they'll get a bot tower for that as well. So a dragon and bot tower you expect. Actually, no, it looks like Astralis is just calling the play off. Maybe they think Nuketuck is base and ran towards bot side, but he's actually hiding around mid. Um, they'll be a bit surprised when they see him show top in a second. So Astralis just calling that playoff, don't want to take too much of a risk, and that's exactly right. I mean, you're in a very, very healthy state in the game right now. Taking risks is definitely something you want to avoid. Um, 
XL. Come away with nothing. Yeah. Again, just a little, little bit of a push. Blue buff. Not really a whole lot else. It's definitely not going to get any easier as we get later into the game. Dukedog eventually will uh, use the cleanse in a fight. Patrick, obviously, no cleanse to his name. If Mickey's not there to body block, things are going to get very hard very quickly. I feel like this is going to be one of those games where one team fight just blows the entire game open. You know, one Good team's going to get 5 for 0, Nash, and then ten, 5 minutes later the game's over. You know what that means? What does that mean? We can do narrative. Narrative. Oh. Here's the deal. Both these teams, incredibly impressive spring to summer transitions. Excel in week 3 last year, 3 and 4. They're now 5 and 1. Straw is 0 and 7. You wouldn't even watch them. You wouldn't look at them, you wouldn't think anything of them, but this team, revitalizing their roster, has now been stepping up. Now they stand as basically the gatekeepers to top six, and that is a huge, huge turnaround for this team. And again, this game, it's a best of one, it's week four. It does not mean everything. But if they can start taking games off top teams, suddenly Astralis are once again a contender for playoffs. You know what both these teams did? They brought back veterans. They never invested into rookies, apart from the Europe who was already there in spring. They invested in Chachi and Cersei and Mickey, players who have an incredibly high caliber or have shown an incredibly high caliber to push this team to the next level for both cases. Chachi taking a lot of damage from Finn here. Martin has the pillar. Yep, unstoppable as he tries to walk out of safety. Will force the flash. It's pretty big. But again, we're just we're taking chunks out of people, but nobody's finishing the job right now in this game. It's still only a single kill. It's one of those things where Nuke Duck say, guys, don't fight. I'm so close to Rabidon, so I could TP in, but I don't want to do it until I have this spike because one fight will blow the game over. Patrick, Patrick caught out immediately fall with the top catch. Chain CC! They cannot save him. Mickey goes in. Mickey goes right back out. Nuke Duck on the retreat. Mizushachi, he wants to keep this fight going. Unbreakable. Stopping that one in its tracks. Dragon two minutes away. There's not a whole lot else to get here, but excellent kill pickup from the side of Astralis. This is why I was questioning Patrick running the heal. When you're contesting midwaves, Kobe can always shoot an arrow out of Fog of War from mid onto Patrick. This time gets caught napping and dies. Now, Astralis is going to force this mid tier one. Nuke Duck can try to wave clear. He has a stopwatch and ult, but I don't know if he'll be enough. We'll see what XL do here. Trying forcing to zone him away. Nuke Duck just forcing him away, eating the wave. Is it Chachi, though? Leaping forward into the, the base of the tower. Jungkook going to be using the ultimate, but that means Kabe could be in trouble. Finn oh, onto the side. Keep your eyes on the Meganar. Throws him back. Doesn't quite knock him to the wall. The wall to follow. Kabe immediately forced to cleanse, but no, because of blows. Too much to deal with. The 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 they were so close, but now the Shockwave. Dayor the hero. The man who could turn the fight. Making it at least an even trade. Fighting back and forth in the mid lane. It's even on both sides. It was a two for two if we exclude Patrick, drop, Patrick dropping earlier. And it was a little bit too aggressive there by Astralis, looking for the mid-tier one, actually trying to force some kind of dive. And now Patrick and Markoon might two-mana Baron here. We'll see if Dior can sense something happening here. He knows they're around the Baron pit. He's going to check here. He's going to spot them out. Markoon stepping in. They have to be careful, though. Dior level 14, two items under his belt. You cannot face check that Orianna. Wow, so many things happening in this fight. So we'll look at this again. This is Patrick getting caught out. He doesn't actually have vision on Kobe. doesn't have the cleanse. And then he clears midway, thinking, guys, let's get vision in their bot side jungle. All of a sudden, an arrow to the face, and now what can he do? No flash either. Mickey tries to... I mean, he pulls Mickey in here, maybe to help Mickey reposition. I was a bit scared that Mickey was just going to die with him for a second there, but... Anyway, XL's out, the Ornold's blocked. Now Astralis just getting way too aggressive, trying to force this tower, trying to just look for a 3v4 dive. Early in the game, but the tower is still very powerful, and obviously Nuke Duck, a lot of AoE here, moves in, CCs, interrupts any potential dive as well, starts to clear the wave away, and as the fight plays out, Straws are really out of gas. Yes, Kabe's doing good damage, but with Finn coming in on the side, they just overstayed their wall. Yeah, Finn pulls Kobe back from his flash. Cleanse was good reaction time, but then it's here where the Yor TP's in. Massive shock wave. Someone flashed it on XL. Nuke Duck is the one that reacts and flashed away. Finn doesn't have it. And then it ends up dropping regardless. Two for two. Good TP there by Dior. 15 seconds on the next dragon. Everyone has oops up again. It's time for round two. Look at the damage in that fight. Kabe free hitting. A single shock wave coming in from Dior. Nuke Duck. The only one who was able to make full impact in that fight is Patrick was picked off very early on. Markun trading off to the side with Cersei. This is the one we want to be talked about. Yes, Wukong has superior AoE, but in the duels, Trundle, very oppressive champion. Finn has Meganar. Astralis see it. They're trying to wait out this Meganar. So we'll see if XL just forced the dragon because TikTok on the clock, they won't have a Meganar or an engage tool. Fade away. It's going to have to be Nuke Duck, I think, to go in if they want to fight this. Or it's a 50 50 with Kalista. Rage fading. Ulti used. Unstoppable now. Contesting. It's just going to be a 50 50. Who's going to get in the end? <laughs> 200 health left. Markoon taking that one away. What a steal. Yeah, Xerxes just smiting too early there. It smite, got smitten, but I think it reset as... Um, smote, smitten. Smote, smitten. Smited. <laughs> Smited. Dove, divin. 
dive. I, I like, don't know. I like Divin. It sounds Divin. so wrong, and it brings me joy. Okay, I'll say Smitten then. <laughs> um, I think I think it, I think it actually healed up a little bit. So Cirque thought he had the smite, reset a bit. Marcoon just said thanks, mate, and took it right away from him. So two dragons apiece. Ten minutes away from a soul for either team, and Nuketok has the Rabidon. So two item spikes coming in for XL here. And tragic there for the side of Astralis, because I think they played around the Meganar perfectly. 15 seconds, you have to wait before you can start stacking Rage again. So once you see that away, clear window of opportunity to get things going. Obviously, Excel, though, knew that they had to go. Pulled the trigger, yeah. forced the 50-50, essentially, by getting the Dragon so low. And you can see the value of Braum. Chachi can't just call the Ornhorn and just force them back, because he's just going to get blocked and it's wasted, essentially. Then Excel can look to counter-engage. So it's very hard for them to find angles. We'll see if Xerxes looks for more flanks. A man's got caller ID. Forge got on block. Forge got on block. Sent too many weird DMs. What about it? Muted. <laughs> Easily taken care of. Finn, 2.1k gold ahead. Massive yeah. lead for him. XP, quite even. You know, Finn will get to level 15 soon, but this is what the Nard does. It pushes in the Orin, has side push, can move to mid first. Therefore, you have more numbers advantage earlier on. And then Chachi, you can see him running. He's going to have to keep up. He's a bit slower than Finn, but eventually he'll arrive. Just make sure his team doesn't fight beforehand. That's the power, you know. They have more pressure for a little bit longer. Absolutely. And the later we go in the game, obviously, Chachi's levels are really starting to matter here on out because this is when the Masterwork items start to come in and the rest of your team start to buff the stats of your allies. And it's on Finn. We know he's powerful in the side lane, but to find that impact in the team fight. Because for Chachi, it's easy. Wait for the Braum shield to be gone, alt. Win a fight every single time. For Finn, he has to time the rage right. He has to find these angles. He has to find these flanks. And that's easier said than done. So, Dior has been grouping on midway for the last minute. And Nuke Ducks just ran top and taken a top tier two. And now Dior is going to go catch the wave. I think he's extremely scared of being on a side lane with no cleanse, no Mercury treads. One Lissandra ult and Trundle around, he's dead. So, the way he's playing this game is he's catching waves, pushing out one or two just to make sure he's safe, staying with the team for a solid minute or two in case he's an engage. Rinse and repeat. Fortunately, you lose a tower for that because XL are playing the 1 3 1. And now there's a ward in that pit. We'll see if they start it up. Looks like they were hovering to do so. But now they're looking to trap. And this is the struggle versus Lissandra when it comes to summoner spell choice. On the one hand, you'd really love to have a cleanse. Uh, so you could play on that side lane. So you could be a bit more comfortable in that laning phase. But then you don't have a TP to come to the objective anyway. So it doesn't feel like there's any 100% right choice. And as a result, they do give up that tower. Then continuing to pressure on the bottom side. There's a ward behind Finn, a pink ward. Will they all TP to it? There's a couple pings down there. There's a ward in the bush on the bot lane. He's going to recall now. And Xerxes is on the way down. I mean, there's no one on the map for Excel. They can't counter with a Baron play at this point. Finn now flashing. Oh, he saw Xerxes clone. I think he was scared of getting knocked up and then Ornhorn and then maybe he was going to die. Bit of a panic flash, but you can see why he's just respecting Astralis. That's going to hurt him if the next team fight comes around soon. I mean, 1 minute 58 on the Dragon. Both these teams are getting to the point in the game where you can trade Baron for Dragon because you yep. actually have the damage to do it. 20 minutes on in the game, it's really hard to just rush Baron unless you have things like Diana or, or Azir or Aphelios with good guns or Kai'Sa. Um, but yeah, now it's the point in the game where if you go towards Dragon with five numbers, XL or Astralis, either side could just try to rush down a Nash. Very, very speedy. Um, and just repositioning back to mid lane to make sure that they are safe. Pillar, where is it going to go? Markoon isolated, holding on to the cooldowns as long as possible. John Hoon finally going to use the Devour. Well timed, traded for Mickey's ultimate here. Wow. Loses a lot of his own HP, though. That's oh, going to be big. Copy doing what he can to hold on. Nuketuck off to the side. Jungkook, he's just all out of spells. There's not a lot for him to do here. Alti goes in, but hitting the top can. Oh, Jungkook's not nearly enough, and now he wants to turn it back. Absolute mad lad going in, but Finn now on the way forward. That's one frozen throw. Going to look to make it two. Nuketuck is taken down. Chachi trying to save the rest of his team, but Excel, the team to take the fight. And it's Finn moving to mid first. We talked about the push that the Nar has. He arrives. There's the three seconds of pressure that you need. Manages to clean up two members of Astralis, and now three for one. XL turn towards the Baron. This should be absolutely free. Chachi just swapped to Smite. There's no way he gets anywhere near this pit, though. So I think what the Astralis call here is just catch waves, wait for respawns, look to fight around this next Dragon, because this Baron, it's all but gone. This is big. The side of Excel start to rain in. Finn on the side lane can be that much more of a threat with this buff. Back pocket, still a relatively slow Baron. It's just about Patrick alone. They don't wait for Duke Duck to respawn. So those eight or seven seconds left on Duke Duck's respawn would be ideal to give the buff to him as well. Team is going to do this. So they started off with a fight in mid. Yonghoon a little bit late on the eat as you talked about because Kobe actually gets stunned up here from the brown passive. Patrick getting some auto attacks in. Eat comes through, they're safe. But then Nuketuck comes on the flank. Yep. Jonghoon already very low. Honestly, it looks like he's dead, but confidence in him to force the turn here. However, it's Finn, the real hero of the day. Definitely is. So Nuketuck gets exhausted, and then Yonghoon, smart W here, actually goes on to Nuketuck's flash. Now look at the minimap. Finn on the way, Chachi following him. Finn always going to be first because of the push, and then he manages to pick up the top Kench. Then he, I think he looks towards Cirque here as well. Um, Nuketuck falls to the Orn ult. Ooh! Ooh. 
stylish Q there. Snipes out Kobe. And it was Patrick who picked up uh, the Wukong there. Xerxes. And off screen, Astralis just got the Dragon. So they're on sole point. And they're going to get a mid tier one as well. So XL a bit slow on the bases here. But we'll see what push they can get inside. You can see Nuglak and Finn already pushing down. And obviously, the composition from uh, the side of Astralis scales very well. But can it outscale? About 5k gold lead for the side of Excel. Can they survive this Baron? Weather the storm tell of that sole point. Can't afford to give up their, uh, you know, an open inhibitor, or they might not even get the chance to contest on the next objective. Finn has to be careful here. You can see Astralis trying to make a pick there because they can't match bot. It's already gone. So let's try to make a play top. Cirque really they're wants spending it. a lot of time up there. Finally going to back away, but they're going to give up at least a little bit of damage here on this bot side tower because no one is here to respond. So a tiny bit. They're threatened. They're still not entirely sure. It looks like where the enemies are. So they are just going to give them respect and back away, perhaps unaware that the potential collapse on Finn is coming. So tier 2 bolt has fallen, we'll see if XL can pick up the tier 2 mid because you always have to weigh in standing gold when you have Baron. What can you actually do with it? Well, top tier 2 was already dead, bot tier 2 is now gone. The last objective really is at mid tower unless Astralis takes some kind of fight and Chachi finds fit. Cirque is on the side, no flash of course, we saw it burnt earlier, but I don't think Cirque has the damage alone here, he might just have to back away. Similarly, uh, Mininar very good for shredding tanks. Meganar does a lot of burst damage, but... Uh... Difficult to win out against an Orn who is entirely armor. The only real magic damage threat on the side of Excel is Nuke Duck, so just trying to shut down the remaining three damage sources. Yeah, so I think what Astralis want to do here is three minutes until Dragon just stole the game out and wait. Unless they can find a pick, it's better for them to play defensive, clear waves, whether the Storm on this 40 seconds left on Baron, and then look for the Dragon. But Alti going in, locking up Kabe and Jonghoon. Kabe now trying to step away, Jonghoon getting so incredibly low. Zerse forced to leap over the wall. Siege, now they have access to this tower. Deor in the area. They're trying to zone away. We'll go back to safety. Eyes on any potential shockwave. Poor Mickey. Chachi stepping oh. forward, just barely able to make it out of that Andrews. one. Is it burning him Is down? Is he burning inside? No, he's Ooh. fine. He's going to make it out. I was a bit worried there for Astralis overstepping a bit. And I think Patrick wanted to walk up and hit that tower, but he doesn't have flash. One shockwave lights out for him. Chachi still unable to use the Ornold. He needs to watch Mickey X with his Hawkeyes and see the EUs, and then he can pull the trigger. But until then, there's really not much he can offer his team. Sometimes you see the Orns ult backwards, and then they use the ramp forwards to actually knock up the Braum instead of using it forwards and then him blocking it. But then knocking up a Braum doesn't really bring you much value unless you have really good follow-up. Um, so yeah, two minutes on this Dragon. That's going to be the next team fight. And the game will slow down a little bit more. XL and Astralis just looking for more and more items. Kobe really wants that Infinity Edge as soon as possible. Patrick building towards things like the Wits End. Void Staff for Nuke Duck, perhaps. Oh, but it gets very scary for XL. Kabe gets that IE. Because at this point, they're all MR. They're just trying to survive that Orianna Shockwave, the Orn magic damage. Yeah. Got a little bit of armor coming through, and I believe Finn will probably work towards a dead man's play as well. Potentially a GA, but. Very vulnerable. If Kabi's ever allowed to free hit in these team fights, it should be easy for Astralis to take over. You're completely right. I mean, look at Finn's, Finn's items. Where's the armor? There, there is none, right? So he is going to get melted through. I mean, Meganar will help him out a little bit. We'll see if he builds towards. Is that a dead man's build towards? We'll see anyway. Man, it could be a GA. That's hard to say, my friend. So, yeah, I mean, XL, there's not much you can do here. You can't really siege a tier three without Baron buff because one, they clear the wave too fast, and two, you're stepping up with short range champs against Orin Oriana. So you're just going to get engaged on and die. And then similarly for Astralis, you don't really want to leave your base until the Dragon spawns. You have no reason to. You may as well just catch these waves, make sure your laners are safe when they're doing so. Get those items and then start a fight. Patrick just picked up his fourth. Void staff for Nuktak. See if Kobe can get that IE before Dragon. As a minute remaining, you can see Excel recalling buying the items, as you mentioned, and now moving their vision line towards the bottom side. All those wards on the top side, I imagine, will start to get shifted over. They wanted to play top side earlier, try to siege a bit, but now they want full control of the pit, full control of the dragon area to deny soul from the side of Astralis. 50 seconds. I mean, this is one of those things where the game might go even later. Because you know what the Astralis yeah. could do, Dracos? They, they could, could just... You know that dragon? I'm good. I'm good. We'll fight for the next one. We'll fight for the next one. Um, we'll just stay in our base and wait for that Kobe Infinity Edge and not try to risk the game. Um, because, of course, if XL do get a fight and they do win, they'll just end the game straight up. I'm not sure if Astralis can. They haven't taken Tier 2s yet, so it becomes a lot more difficult. Take a lot of time. That is the route that they want to take. And XL just fishing, waiting for someone to step forward, try to clear a little bit of vision. Slow Astralis. and steady. Arthur's from Astralis. 
Trying to push the waves out bot side, maybe to get an avenue back into their own jungle, but as Finn has already pushed the mid lane too, it's it's just hard to get control back of this area with the threat of Nuke Tuck coming over the wall. Yeah, it's smart what Astralis are doing. They're not face checking their jungle, they're running through a lane. So they're gonna push this lane in, and what's their vision? It's the creeps. The creeps will give them the information, and now can they steal it? Can Cirque get in there? I think yeah. it's gone. TP getting lower. Soul point for both sides. Someone's getting the soul on the next dragon. Credit to Excel, nice, slow, steady, clean, not giving anything up there. Astralis played well in response, but did not want to take the 50-50 to try to contest this blind. So now is Excel going to transfer all their vision topside now and make Astralis face check the Baron? Because I think Excel can start that one up as well and rush it down with the Kalista. Astralis looking for some mid push, looking for a target. Chachi stepping up, incredibly tanky right now. And they're going to contest this next mid wave. Nuke Dark has a great position on the flank. They have to be careful for that. Cirque is already trying to spot him out right now. Mid wave contest comes in. And Nuke Ducks can go to bot wave, so he has the TP in case a fight kicks off. Astralis now leaving their base, looking to force something. We're in an interesting position. You highlighted it earlier, but we're at the point in the game where either they're just going to handshake and walk away from each other, or have an absolute fist fight that will just end the game. Yeah. It's like, well, we could fight, but yeah. I have Infinity Edge. It's, uh, it's, 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 it's the standoff. We both got a gun pointed at each other, and like we could shoot, or we could just put them away and walk away. You know what I'm saying? But you got to shoot eventually. Because one of you is not walking away. <laughs> you got to take your shot. Astralis have one shot left. That's it. If they lose the fight, it's over. So they want to make sure it's a good one. They don't have much vision around this Baron. They have one ward in the red buff entrance. That doesn't help out a lot, though. But the Ash fork shot will. What's their response? Do they run towards this? Nuketok has incredibly good TP wards behind them. And it's split pushing right now. Fit finds Cirque. And leaping out. So far, purely XL favored, giving up just a little bit of life, a little bit of time, getting all that bot pressure. And Nuketuck just staying, waiting just out of vision range to keep this push going as XL now take mid control as well. And Astralis is getting dragged around the map. They're not going to find their perfect 5v5 because XL just are not giving them the option. Well, Kobe is showing bot, and of course, he has no global, so that's the call for XL. Start it and finish it. It's going to be too late to respond here. Kobe, the yours in base as well. He could TP if he wants to, but he's not going to do it. Yeah, there is the TP. There's the arrow. It's going to be a match. On to Patrick. He's stuck. Patrick. Nikki can try to step forward and block. Vizitachi now going in. He's only going to find the knock up onto one. 2.8k getting lower and lower. Xerxes still in the pit, isolated. Is he going to try to focus on the Baron instead of the fight's now breaking? Oh, keep your eyes on Finn. It's going to be massive. Kabe trying to find the angle. Knock back in the wall with Kabe. Clean cleanse. Buys a bit of space with the stopwatch. Buys a bit of time. Now the retreat coming out from Jonghu. Mickey X leaping forward to body block for his top laner. And still, the Baron stands getting lower and lower. XL will have to fight for it, but they're going to get it in the end. It was a close call, wasn't it? It was anyone's game for a couple seconds there in the pit. Nuke Duck almost dropped before even being able to use the old Patrick was stunned for so long by that arrow and uh, XL get the Baron doesn't look like they can end the game just now Dior being alive gives them enough wave clear but you can see all of XL just trying to shove as many waves in as possible to try and look for as many towers and inhibitors from this push 15 seconds left on Cirque Chachi up in 25 it's on Astralis to hold on we're at a 10k gold lead Baron buff will still be up the pressure will still be on for Astralis when the next dragon spawns Ocean Soul standing in front of XL should be theirs to take flash here Nuke Duck though, pressing for a little bit more. Jonghu just chained CC. No one said turning their attention towards Kabe, but Kabe does so much damage for now. Uncontested as he tries to free fire. Kobe. The pillar there, they leap into him. He flashes away. Out to safety. One frozen throw. Finn off to the side. Oh, Kobe. Oh no, you're biting off more than you could chew. You got the wrong queen of the Freljord here. Ash stepping up. Marcoon walking away. Yes, they grab the inhibitor, but losing two members in the process. Oh, Finn's not done yet. He wants to get this bot in him. He just cheekily sneaks back in as Astralis think the fight. Oh, he doesn't get it. Oh no, does oh. the cannon be deterred to it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> What is it with 1 HP on these towers in inhibitors? XL, now Finn's gonna try and run away. He does have the dead man's it looks like, so he has a lot of move speed. Kobe doesn't have the ult, and Cirque is not in range to gap close, so it was a two for two. XL getting a little bit too overconfident there on the dive. They end up <laughs> dropping, and Astralis can keep holding on one minute until the soul. Shout out the observers who just followed Finn, the walk of shame all the way back through the lane. If you take a look back at this one, you can see the stun from the arrow, so long as you highlighted the follow-up there from Vizichar. Yes, yeah, so let's watch Nuketuck. Goes in, gets knocked up, gets knocked back with the shockwave, just gets the ult off. Finn jumps in, zones away Kobe, zones away Dior. He's dealing with the carry, so the rest of XL can play this 4v3 against the front line. Stopwatch bought him so much time there. And then lucky for him, by the time he comes out of that stopwatch, XL have cleaned up the front line. So they need to get their carries a little bit further forward, Astralis, if they want to be able to contest XL in these fights, because despite Chachi being so tanky, it looks like they have way too much damage. A terrifying prospect, especially once that first kill comes through. Again, Marcoon though, starting to step back. That's an ultimate from Cersei. 
that much easier again. We're 26 seconds away from the next objective. They're trying to take out at least one member before anything else breaks out, but Patrick gonna take him out to safety. Shockwave is now gone. Oh, Excel think that this is their fight to take, but Mickey so squishy in the face of this ash. Patrick so incredibly powerful. New Tech now stepping oh, in. But Kave is absolutely popping off. The front line is doing their job, but still Astralis called the retreat. The game. They don't want to overstep because Finn is ending the game. Astralis would have won the fight, but Finn is off to the side, making sure if they try to take it, they lose the game. Excel undone. They want to keep pushing here. It's still a 4v4. We'll see what happens. Mickey's incredibly low. Finn needs the Meganar if they want to contest this fight because Kobe has no sums. The Yor has no sums. A lot of ultimates went wide there for Astralis. The, the Wukong ult, the Oriana ult, none of them did anything. And it looked like Mickey's engage was fantastic onto the Yor, but Kobe just shredded through Nuke Duck in, in an instant, in a blink of an eye. No, his last item yet. He's only going to get scarier. Good news is. They have the soul. They might have won the fight, but Finn off to the side, buys the time, buys the space. Patrick taking the soul, that's going to be big. So Astralis, coordination maybe not on the same page here. Maybe Cirque wanted an Ornal there onto Mark Hoon. His ult's gone. Then we'll see Young Hoon go in. And now watch the ball from Dior. Shockwave misses completely. So now Dior looks like he's caught here, but the Ornal saves him because Patrick has to run backwards. Now we'll keep our eyes on Nukta. How quickly does he die to Kobe? Instantly gets shredded, two auto attacks, and he's gone. He looks like he used the ult onto Dior instead of himself, and then Chachi's dead. All the meanwhile, there's a push in bot from Finn. So Astralis have to call the fight off. Maybe they would have liked to have chased down there with the numbers advantage. And this is the struggle. Is that Kabe is really most, if not all, of their damage. He's going to offer the GA as the final item. Full build now. So if Kabe's not in the area, no one is really too threatened. That's a six item Ash, but also an almost six item Oriana. You can see the gold and the CS that Dior has. 467 CS and 42 roughly minutes in the game. He's actually ahead in gold of Nuke Duck right now, which I mean, doesn't really matter for the Lissandra because once she hits her core, that's all that she needs for team fights. But Dior is going to do a lot of damage. Cell needs to be very careful. These carries are so strong. All Straws have so much power in the team fight, it may not matter. Excel have been dragging them around the map. Yes, they've given up members here and there, but they've always come out on top in the long run. Their massive gold lead, the soul standing behind them. Straws have to be flawless in their execution in the next fight if they want to get anything done. But it looks like Excel, they're not going to take any risks. They're just slowly but surely going to burn down the base. Mickey now looking for the knockups. Zersei off to the side, zoning away Marcoon. Patrick still with ulti up and available. It's so hard for Astralis to isolate and take down any individual member on the side of Excel. Oh, sure but now that's the opportunity to get the fight kicked off. Big damage coming in already. Patrick getting taken down. Mickey just needs to make his way out to safety. Finn off to the side trying to split their attention as Marcoon keeps the waves pressed in. Mickey taken down. That's going to be two. Astralis finding an advantage, holding the base. But Finn still wreaking havoc. Still playing off to the side trying to make sure the they can him, move in. He the wants to take the third in him. But it's the same story. It's been all game. Excel just cannot finish these structures. Excel just wanted that one inhib because then you have three inhibitors, of course, so you have incredible amounts of super minions pushing into the base. Astralis held the line on that inhib. Patrick and Mickey walking up. Patrick had no flash. Cirque, they found the knockup. There's no objective for Astralis, though, so they can't really do anything with these kills. All they can do is push out, get a little bit of vision on the map. Maybe they can find Finn. Bot tier one is an objective bounty. Oh. Will be more gold. He's spotted, but they don't have any CC. We'll see if Top the knockup connects. He can jump on. Young Hoon there, he has flash for the knockup. Dost auto. Oh, he eats him up, spits him back out. But Finn, Nuke Duck oh, ready to come over the wall. Look at the damage. He's getting resurrected. Is Nuke Duck gonna follow? Is he gonna commit? I think they have to give this up. There's no reason for them to commit for this one. He goes mega, he knocks it back for a brief moment. He tries to dissuade it, but they're gonna get the shutdown. That's massive. Another bounty waiting for them. Big money into the back pocket of Astralis. It was a 10k gold lead moments ago. Knocked down to six. The chances are growing here for Astralis. It looked all but doomed when Excel got that Baron fight, but now, slowly but surely, despite Excel having this ocean soul, the picks are going in their favor. The waves are pushing out. There's life in this team again. And with the Baron up, it's a 4v5 for the next 45 seconds. Just outscale forehead. Just outscale okay. forehead. Six items. An another bounty on the back of a Baron would be big. Mickey trying to find the pick. The ulti going wide. Maybe they can go for a steal. Spellbook on Nuke Duck. Still on the bottom side. Does not want to TP into this one. 5k. Looks like Excel are going to give this one up. Marcoon not even going to go for the 50-50. Wow. A Baron in the hands of Astralis. And they're engaging on Dodge Patrick. Back. Patrick now going to be in trouble. The rest of the team fully committed to the fight. They've been caught out again. Mickey holding on for now. Eaten up. Patrick spit back into the waiting arms of Kame and Astralis. That is so damn clean in these fights. Another pick. Another two kills for Astralis. They have the Baron as well. That'll help out so much in defending this base that is in absolute shambles. Only a couple of structures left. They have one tower alive, but they've got hope. They've got kills. They've got a Baron. They're going to push down mid now. 50 seconds on Patrick. They can start to push in and get this tier two mid. And remember where these teams sit in the standings. 
Because at the end of the day, this is a team tied for first versus a team tied for seventh. The Strolls, they beat the three teams below them. They beat Misfits, they beat SK, they beat BDS, they beat nobody else. But now they stand on the edge of victory up against Excel. Excel have to hold strong because the bounties are still there. Astralis are making bank on the back of every single play. And if Excel cannot finish the job, they will find themselves handed a loss very quickly. Does the gold even matter now, though? Because all of Astralis' carries are full item. The TP's got... Are they going to try to push for an end here? 15 seconds on Patrick. They have incredible damage on the towers. Excel are going to have to put a fight going here. They have to make a last stand. Mickey getting chunked out. That's the unbreakable down. And Vizichachi has ultimate. They can kick the fight off again. But keep your eyes on Finn. They Big cooldowns to watch. The Orion oh, and the Shockwave. Ben knocks him back into the waiting arms. The Wombo combo. Nuke fishing for the reset where the Frozen Thrall is going to go. Daywar still free firing. So much damage oh, coming out of Akame. He's so damn dead. The entire team getting torn to pieces. It was the perfect ultimate, but it was not enough. Astralis stands supreme. Screw your pushing lane. Screw your lead. Astralis stick as a team. They stick as five. And they had a dream of holding on, and boy, did they do. I mean, that mid in it, but about 100 HP left. One auto attack, and it was gone. If that had died, XL would have had so much more push in the lanes, but they defended it with a couple of seconds left. It was a game of interest for them, and they pull out this miracle win. And at the start of this week, when you look at the schedule, every single game, top five versus bottom five. I think by the time day two rolls around, that story is going to change very quickly. Already one massive upset. Astralis, again, they had some promising early weeks, but they were starting to lose their footing. But here, again, moments where they're getting dragged around the map by Excel. Moments where things start to look like they're falling apart. But despite the Ocean Soul, despite losing one or two fights, Crazy. they still, at the end of the day, are able to find the win. Massive for this team. And it was the confidence and trust in those picks. Finn dies. They can move towards mid. Then Patrick and Mickey die. They get Baron and this. It's so late in the game. I don't know what the time was, 45 to 50 minutes. Patrick was around 60 seconds to respawn. So when the Baron died, Astralis looked like, okay, we'll slow the game down even more now. But then they were like, hang on a second. We have a mid wave and we have one shot to end the game right now. And they took it. And the confidence to flip your strategy like that in an instant is something that's a pleasure to watch. Key a player of the game though, at LEC on Twitter, Zersei Day or Kabi. Excellent options. Kobe was Mr. I, Consistent it, once again. I just, yeah, an absolute rock in those team fights, doing so much. Not that everyone on the team doesn't uh, deserve their chance at this, but just be a rock. Forehead. Just be a rock. <laughs> well, anyway, when we get back, uh, Kobe interview after the break. In the meantime, enjoy six Star Guardian music, and we'll return shortly. Even the biggest champ needs a break. Did anybody see my skin cap? 